The promise of God is great. It's great. It's great. It swallows it up completely. Hallelujah. 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 Shut in with my God. And I see red Thank you. 
in the midst of your circumstances, if you can behold Him over your obstacles, you're going to get a double portion of the anointing that will flow all over you. There was a blind man that came into the city of Bethesda, and they brought him to Jesus, and they said, Lord, heal his eyes. And he said, he said that he brought him out of town. He said he let him out of the city, and he spit on his eyes. And he said, what do you see? He said, I see men like trees. And he said, he laid hands on him, and he prayed again, and he said, what do you see now? And the Bible says the most interesting thing. It says he made him to look up, and then he saw men most clearly. Most importantly, he was prayed for to be able to look up. Look up into the hills. Yes. From whence cometh your yes. help? Yes. Your help coming from the Lord. Amen. Look up in there to those hills, and you can either see the enemies of, the, of your circumstances, your situations, your problems, or you can see the chariots of fire because the Lord touched his eyes. See, it was more than a healing. Those those miracles are not just talking about a blind man that got healed one day. Right, right. Jesus said in the, in the, about the Laodicean church that they needed eye salve yes. to be able to anoint their eyes that they might be able to see. We need eye salve. We need understanding. We need to get healed so that we can look up. We need eyes to see into the heavenly that enables us to say, I'm not worried. I don't have a fear. Right. I don't have a doubt. I, and that's not just saying. That is the sap. That is the anointing. He told another blind man, he said, he spit and made clay, put it on his eyes and said, go wash in the pool of Solon. Go wash in a place called a gushing, flowing fountain. That's here. That's now. That's here, and that's in the presence of the Lord, where we get washed by the water of the Word, and it enables us to see. Amen. And it causes us to look up right. in our circumstances, in our situations, in our trials, when we've got death all around us, when it's a stinky situation, we can say, God, bless this. You know, if you read the Psalm 34, bless the Lord. I know it's not bless the Lord, but it, it, you know Psalms 34. It, I will bless the Lord always. Ah, yes. And he goes on, uh, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Ah, yes. It talks about the, if you fear the Lord, the angels of the Lord shall encamp round about those that fear Him. Yes. It says if you look to Him, you'll not be ashamed. He enlightens you. And it goes on and on. But if you read the first couple sentences of that psalm, it was after oh. David acted like a fool in front of the king of the Philistines, and he was exhorted out. He was commanded to go out. Remember that story? Yeah, yeah. Where he acted like he was yeah, crazy. crazy. Yeah. That's when he began to sing that song. Yeah. Right. Think about that. He sang and prophesied that song in that situation. Yeah, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The ability to look up the ability to see the Lord. The ability to say, I'm seeing something different. I'm hearing something different. I'm seeing the sound. I'm hearing the sound. I'm seeing a voice. Yeah. Listen, listen, that's the miracle that we have in this whole world. Is that I don't care what hits us. And I don't care what hits the people that you're working with the family that you're living with, the people that you're rubbing shoulders with, you are absolutely their priest. Yeah. Hey, Aaron, Aaron was the prophet and Moses was God. Yeah. What is that all about? Paul said he 
was the father, right. and they were his children. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Listen, we got people under us in the places that we go and the things that we do, and we need to bless them. Amen. We need to bless them. We're seeing, and just like that servant where Elijah said, "Open his eyes," we got that power. Amen. We got that power. We got that ability. That's right. Open their eyes. Amen. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Sometimes people need to think you've lost it. They really do. They need to think that you've gone beside yourself. Because then they don't have anything to latch on to you with. Because they think you're beyond them doing anything. So they let, that's what David done. They, here, here he came. I mean, that was, it's, it's just like Frank has said, that was the most trying time. It looked like everybody he loved become his enemy. He called Saul his father. And, and, and when they, they, they were all out against him, he come up that hill, he just started going crazy, just acting crazy. <laughs> What'd they do? They said, he's no threat to us. Leave him alone. He's gone mad. They left, and you know what he did, don't you? He went and sat down on the throne and got anointed. Can you say praise the Lord? Well, glory. I don't think this is word-related at all, but... Uh, Uh, Marie's father, his dad, Paul Quiller's dad, was a very rough man. And, and he, and he uh, occasionally liked to get a little intoxicated. And he got intoxicated one time and they were having church and he rode his mule up down the middle aisle of the <laughs> church. And so they took him to court, disturbing the peace and whatever. And he didn't know how he was going to get out of it. And he went in and sat down, and there was a man come to help him represent him, a lawyer friend, and they had a basket of fruit on the table. So when the judge come in, they got ready to commence to hear his side of the story. He grabbed a pineapple out of that basket, just went to gnawing on the whole whole thing like a madman. The poor old judge said, this poor fellow is not responsible for what he's doing. said, we're just going to turn him loose. And they turned him loose, praise the Lord. So sometimes it's good for people to think, I better not mess with him. Amen. Because if they could, they'd try to divert your path. And the best thing you see, David knew he was destined to reign. So instead of succumbing, to all of their taunts and threats. He said, let me get right out of this. And then he took, of course, right away. They said, he's no threat to us. Get out of here. He just, he's already gone mad. Why, we can't, we, we, we can't take him in. Said, he's poor fellow, poor old David, great David, mighty David. Look at him now, this pitiful, poor creature. But oh my God, in a few days, he wasn't pitiful and he wasn't poor. He was dripping with oil where they'd poured it up in his head. And he was ruling and reigning in a new dimension. And in another realm. Can you say amen? Oh, glory. Well, open your Bibles, would you please, to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Hallelujah. I sure praise Him for this great anointing. I sure thank Him for that mighty time this morning. I thank Him for that new wine I'm drinking on tonight. For that Holy Ghost in uh, saturation and inebriation, glory. I'm feeling the flow of that other dimension, that other realm. Glory to God. I feel my body giving way to that holy realm. I feel my mind giving way to that higher realm. I feel my soul giving way to that higher dimension. Somebody say amen. I feel everything I own. It's got to be like Obedidim. I'm going to be blessed everywhere I turn because the ark has come to my house. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Read with me in verse number four. One generation passes away and another generation cometh. 
but the earth abideth forever. The sun rises, the sun goes down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goes toward the south and turneth about unto the north. And it whirleth about continually. Raise your right hand right now and say, I've got a continual flow. Now say, I'll allow no interruptions to this flow. How does this wind circulate continually? Never a place where it stops. But on the other hand, never a place where it started. Can I preach to you? I'm already using stories and things. Can I just mention the Lion King movie for a minute? Chris always talks about movies. Can I just borrow something? <laughs> Do you remember when, what's the daddy's name? Mufasa carried Simba out on the plane for his first major look at all the kingdom. And he was walking along with him and he said, Son, as far as the sun is shining, that's all yours. And then the antelopes were running by and the Hippopotami were ro roaming around and the zebras was galloping. And Mufasa said, and we respect the hyenas and we respect the antelopes. All of them got a right to live life on this plane that we, and, and Simba said, but dad, we eat the antelope. He said, but he said, but son, we go back to the earth and they graze. And he said, what is this, this called? He was telling him how everything had a purpose and everything was in a circuit. He said, what is this called? He said, the circle of life. The what? Circle of life. How does the wind blow continually? How does the sun, what does the sun do when it goes down? Hastens back to the place where it rose. Hastens back to the place where it rose. The minute it goes down, it starts returning to the place where it arose first. While it's setting on us this evening, it's just coming up in India right now. And as soon as it goes down on India, it'll hasten to arise on us. Yes. That's the flow of life. Yes. That's the continual flow yes. of the goodness yes. of God. Yes. And Ezekiel said, I looked and behold a wheel Come on now. Yeah. in the middle of a wheel. Right. And it had eyes all around it. Yes. And everywhere there could be, there were rings of eyes all around it. That's the purpose of God going forth. That's the discernment of God's work. That's all seeing revelation truth. That's an eye that is not dim. That's an ear that's not heavy. Can you say amen? amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Read on some more with me. Said the wind goes, let's read that one more time, toward the south and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually. Lee, when I need to know that that life is working, I can get with it in my spirit, in my mind, and I feel the wind whirling about. Because Ezekiel's vision, once again, I looked and behold a whirlwind. He actually said, I looked and behold a fire, and the fire was enfolding. Somebody say continual flow. Hallelujah. <laughs> the fire was enfolding itself. What did Moses say? The bush burned, but it was not consumed. There's no end to this flow. There's no end to this life. Can you say praise the Lord? 
There's no end to this goodness. There's no ending point. See, you've got to understand what the Bible teaches about the end. It's not talking about the cessation or annihilation of things. It's speaking of perfection, completeness, total unveiling, complete unfolding of His purpose. It's when everything is being fulfilled according to His Word and according to His promise. When the prophets of the Old Testament spoke of the end, they were not referring to the end of the world. They were referring to the passing away of one way of thinking and the coming in of a new covenant way of thinking. They never meant the rapture, the end of the earth, the burning up of the earth, some volcanic explosion, some great natural earthquake that would swallow up mankind whole. They were not speaking of famine or failure annihilation. None of these things are what they spoke of. They spoke of a new creation coming forth and an old defeated mindset being buried forever. A new way of living and a new way of thinking. Can you say praise the Lord? Jesus said when this gospel of the kingdom became fully preached to all nations, then the end would come. The end of what? The end of death. The end of sorrow. The end of strife. This message, when preached in its fullness and entirety, with all truth unveiled and revealed, will stop man from dying. It will stop disease from living. It will stop fear from attacking. It will stop you from thinking you can be a failure. Right. The end spoken of there is the end of all troubles. The end of all sorrows. The passing away of an age. The coming in. Praise the Lord. This is one time I'll stand in the pulpit and say, I don't mind being new age. I won't be, mind being new age. <laughs> when old things have passed away. Amen. For the Lord thy God would say unto thee that men have flung terms around for years not knowing what truth they really did say, not knowing what truth they really did think. But yea, in these days, I shall align the mouth with the mind, the mind with the heart, and all truth shall be unveiled. All flesh shall see it, and my glory shall be revealed, and the nations of this world will flow in one river, and that river will flow into the sea, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, come on, Shana. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. I feel that whirling about me. I like that scripture that the wind whirls about continually. Don't forget that scripture. You hear me? When all your children is mad at you and all your family is in an uproar and all your bank statements are defined what you know to be true, back off, sit down. Shut up. Get still. And you'll feel something coming right out of the south headed to the north. That's what it says, isn't it? It comes out of the south and goes to the north. What is it? It's the continual whirl of the wind. That's what I read to you. It whirls about continually. And so Ezekiel said, I looked and behold a fire. And the fire unfolded itself. And out of the fire came a whirlwind. We know what the whirlwind is in the book of Revelation. We're revealed there stands an angel that holds four winds in his hand. And the whirlwind is when all four of them are loosed at once. The north blows towards the south and the south blows back to the north and the east is meeting the west. The west and all of them meet in us. Uh, they all come together in us. The north wind is for an inner work. It's the work of God being done in us to drive out 
opponents, opposing thoughts, hardness, bitterness, anger, malice, strife. Look up here and listen to me carefully. You can't repent such as that away. And you can't confess it away. That's right. You've got to let the wind have it. Why is the wind north? It separates the wheat from the chaff. The life of God takes care of everything. I don't get out there and shake them dead leaves off that oak tree. Why, my God, the wind will come and blow it off. And what's left hanging? The new growth will push it out of the way. The life of that tree sustains that tree. Listen carefully. Every year at fall time, it starts turning loose because there's a whole new crop coming on. So it turns loose of the old. In the winter time, every old branch, every old twig, every old whatever, gets good and rotten enough so that when the early winds come, it'll break them off and send them to the ground. By March, go out and look. Your car will be covered with green dust. Why? Because new life is appearing on the scene. By April, you don't even recognize that tree no more. Because it's green. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. That's the word. The trees of the Lord are full of sap. You're full of life. Let the wind blow, folks. Let it blow from every direction. The south winds refresh me. Oh, glory. It's cool and refreshing. It blows in the times of spring and beauty. And when the grass is green and when you're laying in green pastures beside still waters. Can you say amen? Amen. East always talks about something new coming in. It's blowing in a new day. Out of my shandala mahaya. And the west wind is a rainy wind. That brings the rain with it. It brings the rain in. It comes in Oh, glory to God. And it starts blowing the clouds in. And the clouds is full of water. And the water is the refreshment. Hallelujah. It's the refreshment. And it falls upon us. Glory to God. The west wind. Jesus said, read, read your Bibles. and said, that's what parted the Red Sea. That west wind came and blew upon it. And it blasted it. And it went the other way. It's the wind. But the, or the east wind, rather, is the wind of change. It's a new day. West wind is refreshing. The rain is water. I'll pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry and the barren land. So the next time you get in these loud moments, you need to be still and sit tight and just start feeling for that wind because it whirls about continually. Under the Messiah, la manjitidi orostoya. And it returneth again according to its circuits. I need for you to believe that your life is filled with a circuit of God's continual coming again and again to refresh you and restore you and renew you and replenish you. He has come. He is come. He shall continue to come. Can you say it, man? Now read that seventh verse. All rivers, all rivers run into the sea. And yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence rivers come, thither they return again. Continual flow, you see. Circle. It's all a circle. Circuit, circle, life, they're all one and the same. Continuous, operating nature of God, goodness of God, unbreakable. In Him there is no variableness, nor shadow of turning. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Jesus Christ, the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. I appoint unto you the same kingdom that my Father 
has appointed unto me. As my Father has sent me. I'm talking about the same flow of life. Even so, send I you. The words that I say unto you, they are spirit. John 6, 63. And they are life. Oh my. It is a spirit which quickeneth, makes alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. Also John 6. Will you also go away from this flow? I, that this is my ad lib to that. To this flow I've just talked about and introduced you to. To whom shall we go, Lord? Thou hast the words of eternal life. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not this knowledge of the Son, hath not this mindset of God, hath not life. Does not experience life. Does not walk in life. Yet my will, my will, my will, is that you have life and that you have it more abundantly. Beloved, I wish above all things I'm talking about the same circle now. That thou mayest prosper and be in health yes. mm. even as thy soul prospers. Himself took our sicknesses and carried our sorrows. By whose stripes we are, First Peter, ye were healed. Same circle of divine life it were. No break in the flow. No interruption whatsoever. In his love doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree that is planted. By the, do you see what I'm drawing the map in your head right now? It's all the same circle of life. Unbreaking, unbroken. Uninterrupted. See a machine will run all day till something interrupts it. When something interrupts it, then it has to be worked on. It blows a gasket, needs replacing. Springs a leak, needs repair. Overheats, needs something to control the temperature. God's machinery never breaks down. Never blows a gasket. If it didn't happen, it wasn't God's fault. If you've never seen it manifest, it's not God to be held accountable. Hello. Whoa, it's getting quiet now. It's not God to be held accountable for our lack of understanding of His goodness, His power, His authority, His Word. You see what I'm saying? This is who God is. What I'm reading to you right now, this is who God is. God is that wind that never quits blowing. And He is that river that never quits running. That that river runs into the sea. That's, this is the circle, you see. That river runs into the sea. The sea through heat. The water goes up into the clouds. The clouds fill. The rain runs back in the river. The river runs in the sea. The sea runs in the cloud. The cloud runs in. And the rain, rain runs in the river. That's the continual flow of the goodness of God. He blesses and blesses and blesses and multiplies and multiplies and heals and heals and brings forth health and life. And the Bible said, Your health shall spring forth speedily. Who come our son, Nala that interruption is never in God. That re interruption is never in this Word. That interruption is never in the Holy Ghost. That interruption is never in power. The power side of it is pure. The God side of it is holy. The true side of it is mercy. The goodness side of it is that He provides beyond what we ask and beyond what we think and beyond what we hope for. If there's any break in the flow, it's right here. Don't miss the end of it. There is no break in God. And the break in us alone is a lie. It's a false identity. A false thought. A false way of believing. Something robbed us of truth. If you believe a lie, 
and you be damned. So here's what the Lord showed me when it comes to blocking this flow. We remove the circle, the constant rotation, the non-ceasing flow, and we replace it with a box. And in prayer today, this morning, early meditation, the Lord showed me the lines of this box. The first line is, when we identify ourselves or anybody else with a problem, when we ever identify, let's take a disease. Somebody says so and so has got cancer. When you believe that they can even have cancer, you've drawn the first line. Can you say amen? You've drawn the first line. When you accept, when you think that it can even happen to you. Amen. Now don't change the sign to Christian science. Just let me preach this message tonight. Hallelujah. The very moment that you believe something like that can attach itself to you, your mind sends a picture to your whole body and begins to tell your body, you've got cancer, yeah. you've got nerve problems, you've got heart disease. Yeah. Suddenly, your body tells your organs, slow down. Yeah. Your mind, rather, tells your, your organs. Because you see, I taught you this Wednesday night. Hearts are not intelligent. Noses are not intelligent. Eardrums are not intelligent. They don't have the power to think. They're told what to do. And they do what they're told to do by that part of your man that governs it. Look out now. Therefore, there's no power in a draft through a window to give you a cold. Wind is not intelligent. Hello. Therefore, somebody all your life has told you if you are subject to wind blowing out of control, you will get sick. So in your mind, there's a place in your head that says, if I feel a draft, I'm going to catch cold. Your nose can't give you a cold. Now listen, it's true, folks. Your nose has no intelligence. Your nose can't think. Are you following me? But suddenly your mind reminds the body of an old lingering thought. That if I feel a wind, I'll catch a cold. And so your mind starts telling your body, you've got a cold. You've got... I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Now, I need to know we're in agreement on this. Because I'm not trying to be your psychologist. I'm just trying to tell you that there's a mind that is God sent. There's a mind that is God anointed to think the thoughts of God. And if you think that way, you're going to think divine health. You won't interrupt this flow of divine life by constantly battling things that have no power over you to begin with. And if you constantly stay in the realm of needing healing all the time, you'll attract sickness. You'll become a magnet to every kind of disease or it because you'll always see your body as needing something. First of all, I think the clear plan is for you to see your body is not your enemy. Your body is not some big bad bully that's come to whip you and beat you up till you die. Your body is subject to the power of God just like every other part of you is. Are you listening to me? I'll prove it to you. If that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised Christ from the dead shall also do what? Quicken what kind of a body? Your glorified body? That's not what it says. Your mortal body. So it is not God's will. You were not sent here to live 80 or 90 years and then die of something. You were sent here <laughs> in perfection. In divine mind is where you were formed and released for one purpose, to 
to fulfill his image, likeness, thoughts of you. So when these things attack us, it's because we've lost sight of God's view of us, which is perfection, whole. Are you understanding me? So the first step out of that mess is to never believe that anything like that can even survive in your system. <coughs> Somebody said, well, I've done that and it still appeared. That's why you keep doing it. Even when things appear, you treat them as if they're not even there. Right. It's like when you get healed through the land on of hands. Pain will leave you instantly because the anointing of God jokes through your body. Amen. More than likely, not every time, but more than likely, the next day that symptom will return. Whether it's whatever, pain, swelling, whatever, nauseous, it'll return. When it returns, you are not to rebuke it. You are not to have a big prayer meeting over it. You are just simply to say, no. You can't. Power of God drove you out last night. After you state that emphatically and in faith, believing, you sit down, raise your hands, and this is what you do. Show and tell. Watch and learn. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, my wonderful healer. I praise you, Father. The power of God is man. I am completely and totally whole. I have nothing in me that is missing, broken, ailing, or aching. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. Thank you, Lord, that I'm healed. Thank you, Lord, that I'm healed. And let me tell you what will happen. Now, I know I say this, and sometimes I say it and two people do it. Sometimes I say it and no people do it. So one day I'm going to say it and everybody's going to do it. What will happen? That pain will leave. Yes. Probably. Not always. Probably. It will return tomorrow. What you don't do is say, I sure thought I got. I sure thought. I... See, this is the part of preaching that healing preachers never taught their people. And so their people can get healed in a high moment of power. But tomorrow, when the when they're not feeling a thousand jolts go through them, they give way to the symptom rather than the truth of the Word of God. You understand what I'm saying? See, the first line of the box that interrupts is drawn there. Believing this can live in me. This can operate in me. This can. No, it can't. I'll tell you why it can't. Because He holds a perfect image of me and I and He are. You see this? That's the key to a doll. What he is, I am. Can you prove? Yes, as he is in this earth, so are we. Have not I said, every one of you are what? Gods. And every one of you are what? Children of the Most High. What are you doing? Dying. I'm just shot to roast somebody higher. What are you doing dying like men? I've said you're all gods. What do you mean by that? You're as eternal as I am. You're as heavenly as I am. You're as anointed as I am. You're as creative as I am. You're as powerful as I am. You're as whole as I am. Don't draw that first line. And so here's the thing. Let me get back to my point. The next day, more than likely, not always, that thing will hit. Maybe not as hard this time. But it'll probably hit when you're squatted down in the flower bed or when you're up on a ladder or when you're trying to do something really important that needs to be done and you're already frustrated. You done mashed your hammer four times. Mashed your hammer. Mashed your finger with the hammer four times. You done broke a light bulb. You've already got paint on the carpet. You've got, anybody ever have them days like that? Huh? Something else just won't dry. They're just as pretty and shiny as the other ones, but they've got a stubborn spot in there somewhere that insists on stopping before it goes in all the way. Well, thank God for nail guns and compressors. We fix that problem, amen. 
But I want you to know, in a moment like that, you're already aggravated, you're already frustrated, and here comes the old pain again, or here comes the nauseousness again, or here comes the pain here again, or here comes that lightheadedness, or here comes that swelling in your feet, or whatever the case may be. And, and instantly, if you're not careful right then, you'll start jumping on the Lord. God, I ain't got time for this. Why don't you do something? He already done something about it. It's up to you to not allow that thing to identify back with your body. What do you do? You stop everything you're doing. No, you don't. No. You were run out of here two nights ago. I sent you packing. You have no home here no more. I relinquish your lease. I spoiled you. I made a show of you openly. Triumphing over you in it. You no longer have a space here. I sent you out and then I filled that space. Come on, wind and whirl. Come on, river and flow. Come on, sea and rise. Come on, clouds and rain. Come on, river and run. Oh, glory to God. Continually flowing in the life of God. Oh, I don't know if they have to or not, but I preach me happy. Can you understand the page I'm on tonight? That first line's drawn, and then we start making a box. We start blocking the flow. You see, most of the time, 95% of the time, by the third time you do what I just demonstrated, it'll not only disappear, it'll never return again. Try it. Don't try it. But if you're not going to try it, quit whining to me. Because I'm telling you how to get delivered. You understand that? It ain't God's flow that blocked. It's us putting our petitions up. Forming the square. Instead of getting glory to God. Amen. We went over for JJ's birthday at a wonderful place, resort, over in Kissimmee. We all got to God's goodness was precious. He gave us all rooms for near about nothing that should have cost to kill him, but near about nothing. And a wonderful time. But you got a lot to do stuff. I found God over in them water slides just like I found him. I used to just find God in times of sorrow and tears, but now I found out when I'm out having a good time in the middle of the mountains, God's more near to me then than He is any other time. So they had a slide, water slide, a curling kind of, in the dark, in black when he couldn't see me. And I watched everybody go down that thing Friday, and I won't go down that thing so bad, but it looked from the ground way smaller the tube did. And I drew a line. Then I drew another line. And I drew another. Because I said, and I told him, I said, well, if I get up there and get hung up in that thing, <laughs> but I wanted to do it so bad. Till I was itching to do it. And my kids would just go down and Heaven was going down there. Everybody was going down there. Even Chris went down there. And I thought in the back of my mind, surely if he'd come out, I'd come out. Ain't a whole lot of difference. I'll admit the biggest part of the difference would be on my end, but there ain't a... Finally, I couldn't stand it no more. And I made my mind up. I hung upside because I was just going to have to hang up because I couldn't stand it no more. I talked myself into something I talked myself out of. I used my head and convinced myself it would be all right. I went up there and got out and laid back. I didn't have to do a thing. There was enough push in that water flowing down that slide. It just carried me right on down to the bottom. I wrote it about three or four more times. <laughs> Amen. Now I come out rather fast. I never did get a chance to be in the water. I went to the bottom all the way. You know. <laughs> but I kept going back because I found out that down there 
it was way it was way different up there than it was down there. My perspective down here was, you see what I'm saying? Don't block that flow because it's there. Here's the thing: we think we got to pray it in. That ain't so. It's already there. We think we've got to receive healing from a source out here, and that is not so. It's already been done, and it's already at work within us. Are you listening to me? It's a matter of me yielding to that flow. The wind whirls continually. The river flows continually. The sun goes down, and then, are you getting this? Hastens back to the place. I get blessed today, and that blessing leaves me today and hastens to get to the morning where it can be dumped out on my life again. Can you say praise the Lord? He keeps me in hell all day long and then hastens back to flow through me again. Woo! The sea ain't never full. It never quits. Come to my Second line we draw, got to hurry, is... First line we draw is identifying with that thing, believing it can be a part of us. I need the board to draw, but I, anyway, that's the first line. Second line we draw to make that square that blocks us, that block that, that hinders the, the, the flow, is fear of that thing, what it can do to us or someone else. Actually, it's probably easier to relate to the way we do it with someone else. The minute we hear they've got cancer, the next time we see them, we don't even identify them as their name in our mind. When we see them, we think, oh God, you've got to move forth. That ain't faith. That's fear. You're afraid they're going to die. And that's the reason. You understand? I ain't going to run and swing the shell there. I done got my shell in. I'm going to tell you the truth. When you see somebody coming and you identify them or what some man told them or diagnosed them with, then you have bought into that lie 100%. You believe that thing can have effect on them when the Word says, My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory. I'm not blessed, healed, or not healed based on something I've done. I have a flow of life according to His riches. In glory. I'm not dependent on a report. I'm not dependent on a diagnosis, a prognosis, an x ray. I'm not dependent on getting checked out. Because whether they check me out or don't, I've done been checked into the kingdom of God. And His blessings are mine. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. He could tell me a thousand times that I'm going to die. But if I'm hooked in to this continual flow, it'll never become a part of who I am because I've taken my, I've taken my rest in His promise. Can you say amen? You understand me? That second line drawn is fear of what it can do to that person. You, you see them, and if you're not careful, you'll start seeing their hair thin. You'll start saying, oh, they're already starting to lose weight. I mean, we do it. I don't like this stuff. I don't even like to talk about it because you hurt good people when you talk. And my objective is not to hurt nobody. But I want to tell you right now, you won't keep dying or you won't get sold or something to keep you alive. I mean, what it all boils down to is, is you're high tough enough to decide that you're not going to die anymore. You're going to be those gods that you were called to be. I mean, we're just listening to something. Not, you know, and, and, and it was like this. Oh, she, they were, I'm trying to keep from identifying gender because. I don't. I wouldn't want to hurt anybody. Oh, they're skin and bone. Oh, they're just dried up to death, and that was a lie. They were not skin and bone. They were not dried up. Oh, 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 oh,
For I've trusted you with this word. I've trusted you with this truth. I've trusted you with such a great word in Revelation as this. Now will you not trust me to perform it for you, says the Lord. I'll do the performing, and I'll watch over it to perform it. I've not called you to do the performing. I've called you to be the vehicle through which it flows, saith God. Yea, by yielding to me and yielding to my truth, trusting me as I've trusted you with my treasures, you shall live, walk, operate, act, eat, drink. You shall do it all in abundance, a great joy of my supply, for my supply is unlimited. My grace is favor unmerited, and I will hold no good thing from them that walk up right before me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I got anything left on that clock back there? Praise the Lord. Fourteen minutes. Okay, I can do it. I think I'm tired and I'll cut myself short and be down. Uh, that fear of that thing. Uh, fear is the devil, if you will, in your life. Fear is the enemy. Job offered sacrifice every morning because he believed that his kids were going to encounter harm. Every morning. That's the story. He went and made sacrifice for his kids. They weren't there making it for themselves. But he felt he must. In the end, the thing he greatly feared. Hello. Hello. Come upon him. He was afraid all along that what he had might be taken away. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Parody or not, it's still truth. And if you fear it, you give it power to operate in your mind and in your life. Fearing means looking toward the direction of that thing you're afraid of. If you fear an accident, you're always looking for one. If you fear cancer, every little lump, you'll have biopsy. And finally one of them will be malignant because your brain's telling your body the whole time you're feeling you got cancer. You got cancer. You got cancer. That's the reason it's never the disease itself that kills the people. It's the hearing of it. They hear that doctor say that, and from that day on, they dread. They dread. Is it the truth? They dread it all the time. They dread it. Come on now. They dread it to the point that they literally fill their bodies with fatal chemicals. Try to be. I'm not criticizing nor condemning, but I am saying unapologetically that I believe in this heart of mine there's a realm in God where hearing that word ain't no different than somebody to say, there's a duck swimming in the pond of a You understand? I watched my grandmother live through two fatal diseases. And you know how she done it? She neither gave place to the devil. Right here. This devil. Right here. She cost so Torah Mahaya. In the 70s, it was non-alcoholic cirrhosis of the liver. She was given a death sentence. She never listened. She ignored it. She never heard it. Her own children, mother, do you understand what was told? No. I didn't receive a word of that. She never manifested one symptom of cirrhosis of the liver. In the early 90s, it was cancer of the bladder. A mass, what the doctor said. A mass of cancer. I went in the room to get her down off the table. So she By then, she only had the one leg, and she and I went to lift her off the table and put her back in the chair, 
and the doctor had her down. He was sitting on the chair, the stool in front of her, looking up into her eyes, trying to <laughs> tell her that she had bladder cancer. She stared in the corner yeah. of the room. Made him from mad. He couldn't stand it. We got home. Her two daughters said, Mother, now do you understand? No, she said. I don't understand the word of it. She said, I didn't accept none of that. She never manifested one sign of cancer. Are you listening to me? I'm not telling you to go be stupid. I want to make that abundantly clear. I am not telling you there was a healing error. Error, not error, but error. But it did have an error in it. It instantly told anybody who took medicine or visited a doctor or had a test run that they were going to hell, they were under condemnation, they had failed God. That is not what we teach here. And don't none of y'all say it because it's a lie. So, so listen to me carefully. I'm talking about being led by the Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And if you don't feel that you're in that place to stand that way, don't be a dummy and die. Amen. But don't be boxed into a corner Amen. by an over-exuberant doctor who loves to poke needles and cram medicine just so they can get another payoff from the insurance company. Don't become a guinea pig. And don't listen to nobody that tells you you can't live your life based on your own feelings and your own functions and the only way you can live is to be doped up and high and floating all the time. You don't have to amen me now I've said that. Knowing I had to have my own amen to get that. <laughs> Some people don't even know what their emotions are. They don't even know what their real body feels like. Because they're living around so meditated, they never do feel their own body. How you gonna believe God if you ain't even got no feeling of your own? No, I don't 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 be the guinea pig. Don't be the test tube. Somebody say praise the Lord. Don't be the can that they mix all their new ingredients and in see if it works. And don't be bullied into a surgery or a procedure or anything else. Leave there with your mind clear. Be still and know and get the mind of God. God will tell you what to do. If He tells you go get checked, make the appointment today. If He tells you I've already healed you, don't be afraid. And don't lay in bed and wonder. I had to really get old glory to God. I got to shut I had to really... I've enjoyed this tonight. I had to really, really, really find that out when Brianna's arm was healed. And we, and she was brought back home that night and she started flipping and playing. And every time she would, something in me would go, watch out, watch out. Don't do that. I could just see somebody going to her and pick her up. And I wanted everything, if I didn't hold myself back, I said, don't touch her arm. Because every other time it had happened, it came completely out of socket. It dislocated. And it had always been that way. But I had to accept and stand and believe that God had done that work and He'd done it perfect. And if you could see her flip and fly and pyramid and tumble and whatever else, you'd never believe she ever had an arm it came out of socket in her life because God circle of healing is constantly flowing when you don't break into it with your boss. Identify with it. Fear of it. Pull the other line down and that is when you identify through fear that person in that state to God whole different picture. It's bad enough for you to see it that way. Bad enough for you to fear it that way. Then you go try to get God to see the thing. Broken and disturbed. So you don't think God's caring enough and you start really pouring it on. 
God, I mean, they're hurting. God, as if he's not already touched with the feeling. Come on, somebody. God, I, I mean, they're sick. We don't know, think he believes it. So we really want to lay it on him. <laughs> Trying to talk him into healing them. When he healed them too. Mm. Uh, 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 uh. Final square. I ain't got time to talk all night. Final line to that box is trying to tell that flow how and where to go, how to do it, instead of trusting it. Chris hit on that this morning, and I knew then we were in the same vein of anointing because this is what I had to bring to you this morning, but the Lord knew what He was doing. He sets up to serve good, because then Frank got up and preached the very thing I was talking to you about this morning with Elisha and Elijah. So the Lord, He does know what He's doing. You can trust Him. And I'm going to tell you, I feel, I'm talking to you, but I feel so much life running through me right now, I just can't, I can't hardly wait to minister to you. But I want you to know that when you start trying to tell that flow where to go, what to do, how to do it, it's because you're not trusting right. that He'll do it right. You hear me? I have a hard time trusting in some things. My granddad was that way. He'd hover over you. He made you so nervous you couldn't function. Telling you every little thing. If you if, if he couldn't relax and let nobody just go, it was just the way he was. If he was driving in the car with you and you were going somewhere you'd been driving to for 15 years, he'd tell you every turn you got to. Now you want to make a left here, and you want to make a right here. Watch your turn signal now. Watch that fellow on the road right there. He always, always, he didn't believe much in checks. And he always had a pocket full of money. Because he wouldn't tote bills. He wanted little ones. Amen. Only thing I ever fixed that with was he grew up in the Depression and he never had nothing. So having it full, man, it was full. Amen. He'd go in the bank every, every Friday and tell them, I want all 10s and 20s. Don't give me no 50s. Don't give me no 100s. I'd, I'd tell them, I've told them out 150 times, but I never ceased pulling that bank that he didn't always tell me. Tell them 10s and 20s. Why? Because he, he, he wasn't fully trusting that I'd remember that. He thought, well, we're that way with the Lord. We, come on now. We, Mm. Right. Need I say more? That's the closing line to the box. You pull that one and you've totally blocked that flow from coming forth. Yet you read over here what I've read to you tonight and see how it really is in God. This big old wheel. The flow. Winds that blow continually. Suns that the minute they set hasten to the place to rise again. Rivers that run in the seas, seas that don't fill up, clouds that fill up and pour rain, rivers that run back in, all oh, this is all the flow of God's continuing life. And I wish I'd finished reading, but I did. Nothing new under the sun. Everything, the thing that's been that hath been, the thing that hath been will always be. That, and yet we don't remember the former things and yet we won't remember this present moment for we'll be thrust into another moment and yet all along it's a continual wheel of God's glory and His flow working in it. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that be Wouldn't you rather live in that divine wheel than to put your box up and, uh, my God, and have corners everywhere where you run into, where if you're in a circle you don't ever run into the corner, do you? You just run right around back again and start over in God. And in Jesus' name, I've come to speak to your minds more than you. I'm not really here to talk to you, the man on the pew. I'm here to talk to the head inside of you, the mind set inside of you. And I'm telling that mind of yours, hallelujah, that we say no to every interruption. No to every criticism. No to every corner of every box that tries to draw a starting and stopping point on the life of God. And we say what the Word says. 
this wind whirls continually. Stand and worship Him tonight. Stand and love Him tonight. My God, there's a wind blowing all across the land. A fragrant breeze from heaven blowing once again. Don't know where it comes from. Don't know where it goes. Let it blow over me. <laughs> oh, sweet wind, come and blow over me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's, come on around here and let me minister to you now. Blow over me.
one of them got the, 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 the brother-in-law first got the back, and, it, and they gave him AIDS, they gave him blood relation. And then of course the wife contracted it through him. And so uh, Michelle O'Donnell was pretty well full force in that ministry thing of bringing people in there of course, their first thing is they detox you from head to foot. They get everything out of you that's impure in your system. That's the first step, number one. Well, the first step is for them to get them in the mindset where they say <laughs> that God is not trying to withhold healing from them. It's His good pleasure to give that to them. Right. And they know and we know that that's the main number one thing. If you can get that part healed, the mindset, the thinking, then the body will come in flat. But anyway, the brother-in-law just started flying through. He started getting wonderfully well. All his blood tests were normal. They couldn't even find the virus active anymore in him. But the sister was different. She was stubborn. She didn't want to change. She didn't want to change her thinking. And she didn't want to stick to the meetings and coming together. And, you know, those weren't just meetings. Those are really Bible studies, in-depth Bible studies. When you read her books sometimes, especially that first one, you're wondering, well, there's not a whole lot of Scripture and there's not a whole lot. Let me tell you something. If you've never heard her, don't judge that by that because I'm telling you now, if you've ever listened to her teach, she don't do nothing but Scripture after Scripture after Scripture and constantly speaks about the living Jesus that ministers through us. And it's wonderful. But anyway, she said that that sister-in-law, or that sister rather, just would not. She didn't have a mind to be well. She just, you know, continued the same speech and everything else. Well, naturally, she didn't get better. She got worse. The brother-in-law she said was the dream patient. He meant that it was going to be all right. And so every time he gained, he'd gain weight instead of loss. His color never paled, and the symptoms disappeared. But you know what happened? He felt guilty. Yes, that's right. Because he was getting so healthy, and she was falling back. And out of his guilt for her, he stopped glorifying the Lord for his deliverance, lest he offend her for feeling maybe he shouldn't offend her. Some people, the only way you can get a muscle, maybe it's a man that can't see straight. I hate that, but that's a, that is the raw, rotten truth, folks. Some folks, the only way you can get them moving. <laughs> I've seen my granddad go in people's homes and shut the door and tell them before he starts, I'm fixing to make you mad. That's right. But he had watched them sit in their sorrow so long. I mean, like that woman he done that was so defiant, that was mourning and in depression, and he'd work with her every way. And it was so beautiful outside, all he'd want to do is just sit on the porch, you know. And he'd come in the house, she had that dumb door locked and all them shades pulled and all the lights off. Didn't even have a lamp burning. Right. She was sitting on the couch in a corner all soured away. Yeah. More or less answered him with something like, what's good about today or something, you know. And the Lord took him over and he said, get up! Yeah. She looked at him and said, get off that couch! God. He threw that front door open and took her by the arm and made her stand right in front of that door. What he wanted her to see was God was good. Yes. Sun was shining. And he told her to go sit back down on that couch. When she did, she started talking all that depression. He said, you ain't seen nothing. He said, get over here again. That's right. He threw that door up and he said, God's alive. <clears throat> the birds are singing. The sun is shining. Right. The grass ain't dead. Why, even the flowers, he said, on her yard was blooming. He said, if nothing else, you can look at this beauty right. Suddenly, the light came on. She said, I believe I'm going to be all right. Amen. Amen. 
Another time, that woman that he, that, that he ministered to lost her only child that was living at home. She had him late in life when he was a young boy and he got killed in a wreck with, his, uh, with, with the other older brother. And she was doing wonderful, but he came in one day, just her little while, this boy was 11 years old, wasn't he? And, and, and he came in that day to see her and, and she was weeping. And he said, what's the matter? And she said, Brother Edwards, I know that, that baby is all right. She said, but he was the only thing I had to come home to every day. And she said, when I come home is when I go through this. She said, every other time. I, and he said, I'm fixing to walk over there. And I want to lay my hands on your head. And when I'm through and I lift him, he said, every bit of that feeling is going to leave you. And when he picked his hand up off her head, the lighter of the Spirit took her over. And she began to rejoice and laugh. And she said, I feel I'm going to be all right. And it never haunted her again. But that little woman laid up in that bed with that AIDS virus. And it ravished her. And that brother-in-law who had stayed so well began to slump in the same condition. Until... Michelle O'Donnell said that there came a point there was nothing else I could do but crawl up in that bed with her and tell her what a wonderful sister she had been to me and how much I loved her. You know, at that point, there's no sense in condemning people. Just do the best you can, minister where you can. We had to do that the other day. You just minister where you can. And where you can is it means you go in there and you still talk goodness and you're still positive. And she said, I armed her up, and she died right there in her arm. And then after that, the brother-in-law, right. she gave it up. Because he felt guilty for doing good when she was doing so bad. Tell me, there's not more to it than just the organs of the body. If your mind gets healed, your body will come in alignment. Amen. That divine thought. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I had a woman, this is the truth, this is the truth. Is that off now? Is it off? The CD is. Okay. I had a woman that followed my 